So hello everyone, my name is Mohamed Azmal, I'm the founding engineer of iMesh and in this webinar we will learn about Kubernetes Gateway API and how it helps enterprises managing their traffic in the cluster. This is the agenda here. So we'll start by understanding the drawbacks of Kubernetes ingress, then we'll move towards understanding what is Kubernetes Gateway API all about. We'll understand the architectures and features of Kubernetes Gateway API. We'll also have a look at the Gateway API resources and we'll uh, do also a demo at the end of the uh, webinar regarding how to use all these things. So to start with the drawback of Kubernetes ingress, it's very limited in functionality. As a result, the developer or implementer have to use a lot of custom annotations or complex CRDs to implement some of the basic functionalities like traffic routing. It also lacks standardization. As a result, the vendor are given an open ground to implement the, the features the way they like. Someone might choose to go with the CRDs, someone might choose to go with the annotations, which makes it hard for you to switch the vendors. So say for example, if you are already using an Nginx ingress and you want to move it to Istio, you need to have to learn how, the, how to use the annotations and how to use the CRDs, which is specific to Istio, which has its own learning curve. And as a result, you'll end up spending some time over there and the transition isn't smooth at all. The ingress also is only a single resource. There is no proper role delineation in it. So whether it's a cluster admin, whether it's an application developer, all have to use the ingress. As a result, once someone is applying or adding any configuration to the cluster, there's a high chance that it is going to break whatever someone else has already applied. So you'll have to test it multiple times in the development, then you'll have to take it to staging. And even after that, there are situations that it fails in prod. The Kubernetes Gateway API was developed keeping the pain points of ingress in mind. It is highly role oriented. We have a set of, uh, the, we have a set of uh, resources associated with the Gateway API for each individual roles providing a proper segregation and a better experience, developer experience as compared to Ingress. We have specific resources for the infrastructure provider. We have the specific resources for the cluster operator and application developer. We'll know more about this as we progress in the webinar. So few of the features of Ingress is that, as we just saw, it is role oriented. There's a lot of uh, APIs such as we have gateway class, we have gateway HTTP route, TCP route. All of this is doing some specific task. As a result, anyone who is a cluster admin only needs to use gateway to get the traffic into the cluster. And an application developer can only worry about getting that traffic to a specific service using an HTTP route. It is portable in nature since the API is pretty much composable and it's very much segregated. Once you have written something and you, are achieved, uh, and you have achieved uh, the core functionalities of whatever you want to do, it is you don't have to be relying on a specific vendor. The specification of Kubernetes Gateway API is as such that the core feature is supported by all the vendors that are going to implement it. So if you want to switch from Istio to Envoy Gateway to GKE, AKS, that transition is going to be smooth. You don't have to rewrite any of your configurations. All you need to do is you have to use the new uh, controller uh, with the same uh, YAML files and same configuration that you have already written. It is expressive in nature. It supports the uh, core functionalities of ingress, such as header-based matching, traffic weighting, and all that you can think about. So the core features is supported by all the vendors. However, if you are using something which is very specific to you, you can always extend it. The extensibility features provided by the Kubernetes Gateway APIs is better than what you can expect. It can be linked to various layers of the API, making it the granular uh, customizations possible at almost all the places in your API structure. We'll look at it, how to do it in, once we go to the demo and understand the resources. So this is a quick overview of the Gateway API resources. In this example, we can see that we have a cluster operator that is using the gateway to get the traffic into the cluster. And we have various uh, developers who are going to use HTTP route to route their traffic to a specific service. Gateway essentially is a resource that uses uh, that a cluster operator uses to get the traffic into the cluster. Once the job of a gateway is done, the developers don't have to worry about whether the gate traffic is coming or not. All they have to worry about is writing the HTTP route configuration if the request is coming in an HTTP format. All the matching, filtration, 
and uh, you know taking uh, uh, weighted traffic management all those things is taken care by the developer and from this diagram it is clear that one is gateway can support multiple http routes and one http route can be connected to multiple gateways as well so for example if you are writing an application where the uh, products page is uh, supposed to be shown to both the free and premium users the http route is supposed to be written only once you can reference the uh, the free and premium gateways in the http route itself saving you a lot of time for all the re uh, rewrites and all that you can imagine so let's understand these uh, resources a bit in depth so the gateway resource is used to get the traffic into the cluster the specifications for it are as follows however the kind and metadata is similar to all the other kubernetes uh, resources that are there in metadata you can specify the name namespace and you can also use some annotations the way i have used in this example in specification you need to specify the gateway class name gateway class is uh, something which is used by the infrastructure provider however you won't be using the gateway class as much you would be using gateway and http route in most of the cases but any of you who is going to be uh, uh, you know writing a custom controller for yourself you will be using the gateway class and this gateway class name is the only thing you need to change when you are switching vendors provided you are using only the core functionalities of the ingress gateway api sorry the kubernetes gateway api the listener allows you to uh, specify a set of port protocol and host name from where the traffic could be getting into the cluster you can specify multiple listeners but in this case we are using only one listener and there's also an optional field for allowed routes which can uh, be used to to specify what routes are going to be mapped to this gateway so in this example i'm using a namespace and i'm giving the from property the value of all it means that whether the http route is created in any of the namespaces it will be able to connect to the gateway you can choose to provide a selector in place of this so that you select only the namespace that have an appropriate label to be connected to a gateway the thing that is going to be used the most is probably http route all your traffic handling related to http is done by the http route so uh, the specification of http route is as follows so we have a parent thread where we specify a list of gateways where the route wants to connect if you have multiple gateways as we discussed in the example that you might want to connect one route to multiple gateways you can specify a list in the parent thread in this case i'm only specifying the name and the namespace of the gateway to be matched the rules is the heart of http route everything related to matching uh, filtering and uh, taking the traffic to an appropriate service is done inside the rules the rules provides you an uh, a key called matches which once set properly will you will be able to do header based matching path based matching query based matching all at one place and these matching uh, can be used with one another so here i am using only a path based matching if i want to use a header based matching along with it it's simply going to be a logical and so i could match a header let us say if user is foo and the path prefix is with istio then take it to a different service the backend refs essentially is the destination for the traffic so once you, uh, you you're using backends ref you can specify which service you want to end up in this case it's going to the echo server service and the port is also specified here however the backend refs is not only limited to kubernetes services so the extensibility part that we discussed previously applies to here as well you can route the traffic to external databases external apis and external uh, uh, you know any any other apis s3 buckets or whatever you could think of you can also extend the rules by using the proper http filters so http filters can be hooked uh, to the request and response life cycle of a particular http request so you can also uh, extend it on that end however if these two extensions are not something that you are uh, you are requiring or you need something specific you can always use the custom uh, resource to develop and uh, build on top of it to support whatever protocols are not supported by default in the gateway api resources so this was all about the specification and how to use the gateway api so we'll be going into the demo and inside the demo we'll be uh, we'll be exploring an application which is like this so we'll be creating a in its own namespace called k8s gw and we'll be having two different namespaces one is an on istio enabled namespace another is an istio enabled namespace 
and we'll use HTTP route in both the namespace to take the traffic to the respective echo service. Let's have a look at the configuration. So in the gateway configuration, apart from creating the namespace, I am also defining the same thing what we saw in the presentation. Its name is gateway, KAT is gateway. The namespace here is specified to KAT is GW, and we are having an annotation which is required for Azure because I want to disable the probe. It's not necessary that you'll be using this, you, and uh, you can choose to, however, remove this one. Then in specification, I'm using the gateway class name as Istio, since I'm going to use Istio in this case. And in listeners, I'm just giving it a name of default, and I'm giving it a port of AT and protocol of HTTP. So we have just seen that listeners is a list, but you need to make sure that whatever listeners you are adding, it must be a unique combination of host, port, and protocol. We're not using host names in any of our application, but uh, you can also use it to get application and match by the host header that is coming for the request. And uh, apart from that, we have the resources that we are going to deploy. So this is a very simple resource. It's an echo service. And uh, I'm deploying one in a non-Istio namespace and another one in an Istio enabled namespace. So it is a, just one deployment and it's going to be running there. So let's just create the resources first, and then we'll add the gateway. Let me see if everything is running. Yeah. So the deployment is up and running for the non-Istio one. Let's also apply the configurations for the Istio namespace. It is running. So, and you can see that uh, the deployment here, it shows that two pods are running. It is because the Envoy is, again, the Envoy sidecar is injected here. Now let's apply the gateway and see. So you can see the gateway itself is running as a pod, and it, uh, the IP will be assigned shortly. But yeah, it's running as a pod. So in case of the, if the traffic is pretty high, you can also scale these pods. Or even you can choose to have multiple gateways uh, having a different listener. So each of the pods is going to be there for it. You can create, however, multiple gateways. It's not that in only one gateway, all the listeners. You can choose to create multiple gateways depending on uh, your uh, requirements for applications and everything. Let's see if the IP has been assigned. Nice. Now we'll have a look at the HTTP route. So in this case, for the non istio one, what I'm doing is I'm specifying that, okay, I need to use the KATS gateway, which is in namespace KATS GW. And I'll be using uh, matches for a path, uh, for a path, and the type is path prefix. Essentially, any traffic coming uh, at a path of slash non istio is going to be routed to the backend ref I provide. Since this HTTP route is being deployed in the same namespace, all I'm doing is I'm referring the service name and the port number here. You can, however, choose to create HTTP route in a separate namespace, but they won't be able to interact with another service in a different namespace. So for that, you need to use that uh, resource grant that there is another uh, there is another resource provided by Kubernetes Gateway API, which can be used to uh, allow the permission between the for the communication between two distinct namespace. If your HTTP route and application is in a different namespace, however, that is not uh, the case in most of the time. Like you will be using the HTTP route in the same namespace. So let's try and apply the non-istio route first. Nice, it is created. Let's see. Um, yeah. 
so the uh, route is created yeah you can also choose to add host names here those things are also possible but in this case we are using a basic example uh, we are not using any filters as well which you can also use let's try to describe this So you can see it, uh, the type is now accepted and uh, all references are being resolved properly. Now, let's try to communicate with it. And you can see it's giving me the appropriate request body. The hostname itself in this case is the echo, de echo server deployment from non Istio. It's coming from the non Istio namespace, whatever echo server pod is there. However, if I try to access the with Istio one, it won't give anything. It's going to give me a 404 because we haven't applied the HTTP route for that thing. So uh, it's the configuration for this one is also very straightforward. All we are doing is we are matching a specific path prefix and then we are forwarding the request to a specific backend. All of this could be done in a single HTTP route as well. But for this example, we have chose to segregate it just to showcase that you can choose to create n number of HTTP route as and when you like. Let's apply this. created yeah we can see that the route was properly created now if we try to uh, and communicate with it we are getting the appropriate request body out of here see now uh, the thing about this is that the developer experience you get now we can see we wrote the gateway once we wrote the routing uh, logic once I mean, for the Istio one and the non-Istio one ones. So if I want to change, or maybe if I want to switch uh, to a different uh, uh, controller, I can simply change the gateway class name, and it will be working, right? Uh, the core features are supported by all the controller, uh, all the controllers that implement the gateway API. However, in cases of uh, something like an extension and all, you always have this backend revs, filters, and everything. So uh, apart from that, uh, even in case of the HTTP route, the filter chain or uh, whatever you can apply, the uh, you can also do matching on based of uh, HTTP, uh, uh, HTTP methods, get, post, put, and delete, and all those things. You can also do header-based matching and all. So uh, the CRDs and specification themselves are pretty straightforward. And uh, it's basically write once and use everywhere solution. You don't have to worry about uh, had it been an Istio uh, example where you are traffic routing using the Istio CRDs and annotation, you want to switch it to some other provider such as an ingress and all, you would uh, end up like uh, rewriting the entire thing, which is not the case here. So yeah, that was uh, pretty much all about the gateway API. If any questions is there, I'll be happy to take.